little over a year ago, thousands of Trump supporters stormed the Capitol building in an attempt to stop the election from being certified. And they wanted to declare Donald Trump super president forever, no backseas. <laughs> now, what was surprising is that, by and large, the Republican Party has decided not to hold any of that against Donald Trump. And I mean, let's be honest, how can you stay mad at this face? How could you stay mad at this face? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Capitol riot wasn't even the scariest thing that happened on January 6th. Because, you see, my friends, we're now finding out that something else happened that day. Countless Republicans seem to have had their memories erased. I, I know it sounds crazy, but, <laughs> but okay, look at what happened to Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the House Republicans and guy who has definitely called rap music the hippity hop. <laughs> He's one of Trump's firmest supporters, never wavered in public even after January 6th. So when the New York Times reported that McCarthy had privately told colleagues that he thought Trump should resign, he denied it fiercely. He had no memory of saying anything like that. And then the tapes dropped. Uh, I've, I've had it with this guy. Uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. Again, I mean, the only discussion I would have with him is that it would be my recommendation we should resign. It is my recommendation that he should resign, but yet McCarthy's memory of that call was completely wiped. <laughs> yeah, on January 10th, he was all, I've had it with this guy. And then two weeks later, he was chilling at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, dude quit Trump the way most of us quit Twitter. <laughs> he was like, I'm deleting this app. Actually, I'm not gonna delete it, but I won't check it again until right now. Tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> Did you miss me? And by the way, a lot of people were wondering if getting caught on tape slamming Donald Trump would be the end of Kevin McCarthy's political career. I mean, this is Trump's party. You know, if Trump comes out against him, that's it, it's over. All it takes is one crying Kevin betrayed me and it's done. <laughs> but instead, Trump came out and said he and McCarthy are fine. In fact, he said, I think it's all a big compliment. Frankly, they realized they were wrong and supported me. <laughs> yeah, you see, Trump loves this stuff. In fact, if you used to be against him and now you're not, he likes those people more than someone who loved him the whole time because it shows that he made you bend the knee. Yeah, the dude loves converting people more than Scientologists and vegans combined. <laughs> Let me tell you something now. If Hillary Clinton herself came out right now as pro-Trump, I don't care what anyone says. Let me tell you right now, she would be his new favorite person. He'd be like, do we love Crooked Hillary, folks? Do we love her? Let her out. Let her out. Let her out. So good. So good. I love her. I love her. She was so cheeky. Used to be cheeky. So yeah, Kevin McCarthy completely forgot what he said on and around January 6th. But it's not just him. Take Rick Perry, Trump's energy secretary. A few months ago, CNN reported that Perry was the author of a text message laying out a plan for overturning the election. And Perry said, absolutely not, it never happened. But then today, CNN got hold of the complete message and it's actually signed, Rick Perry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's worse. The fact that he was part of an insurrection or the fact that he signed his text message. <laughs> That's such an old person thing to do. <laughs> it's worse than when my grandfather bought a bigger TV because he thought it would fit more channels in it. <laughs> so look, obviously something happened to Rick's memory too. But as worried as I am for those guys, people, I am really concerned about Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Congresswoman from Georgia and soccer mom who's definitely slashed the other team's bus tires. <laughs> you see, a few of MTG's constituents have filed a lawsuit to disqualify her from Congress based on her role in January 6th. Yeah, apparently, there's something in the Constitution that says you can't run for office if you do an insurrection against the government. Yeah, you know how people had crazy ideas back then. Yeah. <laughs> and now, look, we all know it's probably not gonna work, but Marjorie Taylor Greene was still forced to testify at a hearing on Friday, and it looks like nobody has been hit harder by January 6th amnesia than her. You didn't talk to anybody in government about the fact that there were going to be large protests in Washington on January 6th. I don't remember. You spoke to Representative Biggs 
or his staff about that fact, didn't you? I do not remember. How about Representative Gosar? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Did anyone ever mention to you the possibility that there might be violence in Washington? I don't remember. Ms. Green, this is a tweet that you sent out uh, on January 2nd, 2021, correct? I'm not sure. Okay, you don't recall this? I, I don't okay. recall tweeting that, no. Did you advocate to President Trump to impose martial law as a way to remain in power? I don't recall. You don't recall if you wanted to impose martial law? <laughs> you don't, wow! I wish I had Marjorie Taylor Greene's memory. Yeah, I once said, enjoy your dinner to a waiter in 2003. <laughs> and I still think about it every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> enjoy your dinner. You enjoy your dinner. Kill me. <laughs> Meanwhile, she can't even remember if she told the president to impose martial law. Yo, 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 let me tell you something. That should be an easy one for most people. If you ever asked the president to impose martial law, you would never forget something that specific. Like, if anyone can't say no, to doing something that specific and weird, you definitely did that shit. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, have I ever tried to steal a horse and uh, ride it inside a bouncy castle? Um, <laughs> Your Honor, I do not recall. Um, <laughs> but you gotta admit, that sounds like something a pretty cool guy would do, right? <laughs> Right, members of the jury, right, yeah? <laughs> but if it's not cool, then I do not recall, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so, Marjorie Taylor Greene spent the entire hearing denying that she had any memory of anything to do with January 6th. But it turns out, my friends, that there may be a cure to this amnesia because one thing that can bring it back, even if just for a little bit, is evidence. And in another moment, Taylor Greene first denied that she had called House Speaker Nancy Pelosi a traitor to her country before kind of hedging a little bit when faced with actual evidence of saying it. In fact, you think that Speaker Pelosi is a traitor to the country, right? Uh, you're, I'm not answering that question. It's speculation. You, it's you've, you've said that, haven't you, Ms. Green, that she's a traitor to the country? No, I haven't said that. Okay. Put up Plaintiff's Exhibit 5, please. Oh, no, wait. Hold on now. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. No, now that you busted me, I remember the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, I remember it now. I love that move. Yes, that's, that's when you tell your mom, yeah, I did my homework. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, let me show it to me. And you're like, oh, homework. <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant my work at home. Um, <laughs> I'll do that now. Thank you, Mom, for reminding me. I, uh, yeah, no, thank you so much for that. Look, man, I mean, clearly this person is unqualified for Congress, right? Because politicians are supposed to be good at lying, okay? <laughs> this was just embarrassing. Okay, in my defense, I didn't know you had evidence. I mean, I never have evidence for the stuff I say. I didn't even know that was a thing you could do. <laughs> Keep in mind, people, this stuff only happened a little over a year ago. It's not like they're being asked to remember their prom date's eye color. These aren't trick questions. But nobody in the Republican Party can seem to remember planning the insurrection or talking about it or even how they felt about it at the time. Kevin McCarthy, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jim Jordan, the list goes on and on. When it comes to the events surrounding that day, it's almost like it's been erased from their memories, which is obviously ridiculous, unless... On the next season of Severance. Did you talk to the White House about trying to overturn the election? I do not remember. It's one thing to forget work. Governor, to see McCarthy simply doesn't remember what he said about Mr. Trump's culpability. I'm not sure what call you're talking about. Jim Jordan can't seem to remember when he talked to Trump on January 6th. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, I just don't know when those conversations happened. But, uh, but what if an entire political party couldn't remember January 6th? Did you talk with other congressmen about overturning the election? I have no idea. That's a perfect score. Sometimes it's just easier to forget. Hello.
coming to Apple TV Plus this fall.